on the dotted line. Let's fill the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Open and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at my life with my own eyes. Here are some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. It's time for us to band together. It's time for us to become patriots! And patriots are men of action! Are you with me? you all farewell. I miss you terribly, yet my heart is also filled with delicious anticipation of the new life which awaits father and me in the colonies. I look forward to settling in Dr. Franklin's home in Philadelphia and long to see father again when he returns from the wilderness. <laughs> I'm proud to have a brave explorer as my father. I wear his locket always. We'll all be reunited on the wonderful land he is sure to discover. I shall be true to my word and write every day. Your loving daughter, Sarah. <gasps> Again, James. Afraid so, Moses. Help me. This is my last clean shirt. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Much obliged. Dr. Franklin has warned you about standing too close to the press while I'm working on it. Look at yourself. Fantastic. When someone wants to know what's on my shirt, I can sell them a newspaper. We're paid to print the paper, not wear it. I don't just print the paper. I'm a journalist. You're an apprentice journalist. True, but someday I'm going to get the big story. Then Dr. Franklin will make me a full-fledged journalist. James! Moses! Huh? A letter! It's from Dr. Franklin in London. Give me that, Henri. It's addressed to Moses. You look like James. And you look like someone whose dessert I'm gonna eat tonight. Lads, drop everything. Sarah Phillips isn't coming to Philadelphia. Good. I never understood why she had to stay here anyway. Fetch your coats. We're going to meet her at the ship. I thought you just said she isn't coming to Philadelphia. She's not. Dr. Franklin says Miss Phillips couldn't make passage on the Dover. She's aboard the Dartmouth, and the Dartmouth is heading for Boston. Boston? That's in Massachusetts Bay Colony. And there's been trouble up there lately. We have to hurry. She's all alone. Come on. I hope I'm not putting you out of your way, Dr. Franklin. Not at all, Lady Phillips. I have an appointment just down the street. Besides, life's a wilderness without friends. Last night, I had a terrible dream. My Sarah was in danger. Danger in Philadelphia? <laughs> Let me put your mind at ease. It's a fine city, the second largest in the empire. She'll feel very much at home, Lady Phillips. That is a relief. I worry about her, Ben. With Major Phillips off scouting new lands in the Ohio Territory, Sarah will be all alone. But she won't be alone. 
She'll be in fine company with my associates, Moses, James, and Henri. Sarah couldn't be safer if she were still cradled in your own arms. Gentlemen of Boston, the hour has arrived. Oh, no. Please, please. Gentlemen, you know me as Sam Adams, neighbor and friend. Hear me now. Parliament continues to treat us with ill will. First, the Sugar Act raised our taxes. Did we have a say? The answer is nay. Then, the Horrid Stamp Act nearly drove us to ruin. And who can forget our brothers who lost their lives in the Boston Massacre? Yeah! And now, Governor Hutchinson insists on collecting Parliament's tea tax. But did we have a vote? No! So, this is Boston. It's smaller than I thought. Oh, my joints are aching from these rotten roads. The axle is bent. It'll have to be repaired before we head back. The ride home will be smoother. Good. Otherwise, I'd rather walk home. How are we going to find Miss Phillips? You don't even know what she looks like. She sailed on the Dartmouth. That's a good place to start. The Dartmouth! Let's burn it! It's time for us to band together as Sons of Liberty. <laughs> It's time for us to become patriots! Yeah! And patriots are men of action! Are you with me? Yeah! Let's go! Can you not go over every... Hey, Moses! Indians! James, Moses, Mohawk Indians! A Mohawk with yellow hair? There's a story here. Let's see where they lead us. For the Dartmouth, we've got to find Miss Phillips fast. Get this story. Just the tea, men. Remember, we're not to damage anything else. We're just after the tea. Why are you destroying the tea? We're protesting unfair taxation. Parliament raised the tea tax over our objections. Maybe next time they'll listen. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Nope, I heard the others saying it. We've stumbled into the story of a lifetime. I'm going below deck to see what's happening. Stay out of trouble. Take that, Parliament! Miss Phillips! Sarah Phillips! Sarah! Hit me. You'll never take me alive. Take you? Where? Wherever Indians take people. 
I'm not no Indian. None of us are. You're not an Indian. Who taught you grammar? Who taught you to whack people in the head? My apologies. I thought you were here to kidnap me. Kidnap? I'm a journalist for the Pennsylvania Gazette. Now, what do you have to say about the tax protest? Is that what this is about? Disgraceful. The tea is private property. This is so uncivilized. We're not to damage anything else. We're just after the tea. If you are any kind of Englishman, you drop that pencil and put a stop to it. So you think it's okay to impose taxes on the colonies, even though the colonies don't have a vote in Parliament? I think loyal subjects of the king should obey the laws of their country. And you can quote me on that, Mr... What is your name? Hiller. James Hiller. And who would I be quoting? Whom may I be quoting? If you're going to write for a newspaper, you really should treat words with more care. Just tell me your name, will you? I have work to do. Phillips. Miss Sarah Phillips of London, England. S-A-R-A-H-P-H-I. Sarah Phillips? You're Sarah Phillips? I can't believe you're Sarah Phillips. I am. And I'll thank you to stop shouting, Mr. Hiller. I've had a very rude welcome to America, and you're not making things any better. We've been looking for you. Have you? And why is that? Benjamin Franklin sent us. Dr. Franklin sent you? Now who's yelling? Redcoats! <laughs> Abandon ship! Abandon ship! <laughs> Henri, we have to get out of here. Where is James? Look! It is not a mistake! <gasps> James, come on! The Redcoats are on their way! Come on! Unhand me! Ugh. Miss huh? Phillips, I presume. Thank goodness we found you. If we're caught by those soldiers, we'll be thrown in jail. Which, in my opinion, is exactly where traitors belong. Sorry, Miss Phillips, but I oh. can't print my story from jail. Let me go! <laughs> To, but Dr. Franklin told us to take care of you. James, look out! <gasps> Hold! That's an order! I'll get you for this! You rough scallions! Men, stop them immediately! I want them now! Whoa! Shh! Is everyone okay? That was fun. What a story! This is headline news! Shh! Lower your voices. We're not out of the woods yet. Help! Are you crazy? Do you want the British to catch us? I am British. We're all British. Right now, those soldiers think we're criminals. Criminals? What did we do wrong? We were in the wrong place at the wrong time. The wagon's over there. Let's go. Keep down. The Redcoats will recognize you three, but I'll just be another faceless servant. Even if you don't like the laws, you can't just ignore them. That will lead to chaos. But what if the law is unjust? Parliament would never pass an unjust law. But they have. I interviewed the men tonight. The colonies must pay taxes to the king, but we have no voice in Parliament. Does that sound fair to you? I don't know what to think. I only know Ben Franklin would hardly approve of what went on tonight. Then you don't know Ben Franklin. Quick, get down, the constable. Be still, or it's jail for us all. Huh? Whoa! Good evening, constable. Fine night. Fine night for troublemakers. State your business. I'm just bringing some freshly quartered hogs to the Wheatley residence. Hogs, say you? At this time of night? I think I'll have myself a look. I wouldn't if I were you. These are some big, ugly hogs. Nasty to look at. And do they ever smell? <laughs> You're right. They do stink. 
The Wheatley home is right around the corner. Hurry along now. The Redcoats have Boston under curfew. Nobody's allowed on the streets after dark. Won't happen again. Much obliged, sir. <clears throat> this is the place. Come on. Moses, how do you know the Wheatleys? You've never been to Boston. I don't know the Wheatleys, but all of my people know Phyllis Wheatley. How? Oh. From her poetry. She's the finest poet in the land. Muse, where shall I begin the spacious field to tell what curses unbelief doth yield? A woman who can write like that would never turn away someone who needs help. Why are we at the servant's door? Yes? Miss Wheatley? Yes. We're in trouble, Miss Wheatley. And we are hungry. Did Mr. Adams send you? Um, yes? There's a stable round back. The door squeaks, so be careful. We can't wake the master. You're a slave? When I was eight years old, I was kidnapped in West Africa and taken on a slave ship to Boston. The Wheatleys paid for me in the auction and took me home. Mrs. Wheatley helped me learn to read. Not just English, but also Latin and Greek. Please, go on. Well, a few years ago, all of the reading gave me an urge to start writing poetry. And soon thereafter, my first book was published. It has gotten a rather good response in England, though very few copies have been sold in the colonies. That's not surprising. And maybe you should have put pictures in it. The Wheatleys have helped me greatly. They even sent me to London. But I don't understand. You're still a slave. My situation is very different than most. The Wheatleys and I belong to the Old South Church. It is our hope that through meeting Africans, white people will realize how wrong slavery is. I'd love to read your book. I'm afraid you'll not be reading it now, Miss Phillips. We'd best get undercover before someone sees us. Go, I'll bring some vittles. We'll never make it back to Philadelphia on this axle. It has to be replaced. Good. I like to stick around Boston. This is where the action is. Oh, me too. If Miss Wheatley can write half as good as she cooks, she must be another Shakespeare. <laughs> hey! How can a woman like Phyllis Wheatley be somebody's property? It's outrageous. Am I the only one who sees this? Those men tonight throwing tea into the water. All that talk of freedom. What about freedom for Miss Wheatley? Not everyone in the colonies believes in slavery, Sarah. Talk is easy. And freedom is priceless. I know. I was born free in West Africa. But when I was not much bigger than little Henri here, my brother and I were captured and chained to the decks of a ship. An awful ship for the long voyage to Virginia and slavery. That's terrible, Moses. How did you escape? I escaped by using my head and my hands. I learned smithing, a valuable skill. My master loaned me out for odd jobs here and there, and sometimes I was given silver coins for my work. When I earned enough coins, I bought my freedom back and traveled to Philadelphia. There, I learned to read and write and was offered a job by Dr. Franklin, a man who hates slavery as much as I. But Moses, how can you support those rebels? In England, slavery is dying. Here it's thriving. I believe America's struggle is like my own. The colonists consider themselves enslaved to a master they did not choose. And that's a fight. If it comes to fighting, I will not duck. <gasps> I'll fight you for that drumstick. Hey! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's very late. We should get some sleep. Good night, all. Father, I pray you are safe. I pray you will return from the West so we can be a family again. My locket! It's gone! Dear 
dearest mother. So much has happened since I have arrived. I barely know where to start. I'm so confused. These Americans speak of liberty and freedom for all, but deny it to those with skin different from their own. I only hope that everything will be all right once Dr. Franklin arrives, and I trust that all is well with him. Dear Sarah, if only you knew. Benjamin Franklin, the great Dr. Franklin, friend of humanity, inventor of the lightning rod, father of electricity, author of Poor Richard's Almanac, deputy postmaster general of North America. Yes, he is all these things, but he is something more. He is a traitor! No. <laughs> I charge Dr. Franklin with instigating the Boston Tea Party. The East India Company lost hundreds of crates of tea worth many thousands of pounds. This lawlessness was encouraged by Dr. Franklin in his speeches and writings. His crimes are enormous. And for his crime, he must pay the price. We must make an example of Franklin that the colonists will never forget. America! Cookie jar! <laughs>